Greetings, everyone. Well, without question, 1989 was the year of Batman. Holy moly. Not only did we have the movie, which featured the long-awaited dark version of Batman finally up on the big screen after years of anticipation, but it was also the 50th anniversary of Batman. Man, I mean, you think it's a huge celebration now with the 80th anniversary? You have no idea. The 50th anniversary, it was just bat mania everywhere. Like, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing Batman merchandise of one kind or another on sale. And me being a Batman fan and overjoyed that we were finally getting the dark Batman movie that we've been waiting for for so long... I couldn't get enough of it. I was just completely sucked into all the Batmania and just bought whatever I could. So, Batman 89 and the 50th anniversary of Batman. Let's talk about it today on the Multimedia Chronicles. So the first time I remember hearing rumblings of there being interest in doing a new Batman movie, something that would really encompass the Dark Knight detective that we had been seeing since the early 70s, was somewhere around 1986 or thereabouts when I was 14 at the time and I was reading the Dark Knight Returns series by Frank Miller, followed closely by Batman Year One. And of course I had grown up with the 60s Batman series. But I did have a couple of comics from the uh, the mid-70s and thereabouts, so I wasn't unfamiliar with the darker version of Batman, and I was really intrigued by it. And then after reading those amazing comics, I was even more intrigued by it, and then hearing that they were planning to do a movie, a new movie, that featured that version of Batman, yeah, sign me up, I'm there. But of course, we did have a bit of a wait ahead of us. Uh, it wouldn't be until the summer of 1989 that we would finally see that new dark Batman movie realized on the big screen. Which, as it turns out, I guess was pretty good timing and probably not unintentional as well because it was, of course, also Batman's 50th anniversary that year. So I remember very well when the hype began for the movie and we had a release date and we had the teaser poster, which was just the Bat logo and the release date and that was it. That's all you needed. That's all, you know, it didn't even have any text on it other than the release date. It was just the Bat logo and the release date. And that was it. And that's all you needed. I mean, it was such an instantly recognizable symbol that they didn't need to say anything more. It was really uh, a wonderfully subtle marketing campaign in that regard. And then, of course, I also remember very well all of the fan outcry. This was before the internet, okay? So... The fan outcry resulted in actual letters being written and mailed to Warner Brothers protesting the casting of Michael Keaton, who a lot of people only knew as a comedic actor, which is unfortunate because he had actually done some serious stuff by that point. I mean, he did, of course, Beetlejuice, which I wouldn't say is serious, but it was dark. And that was actually apparently what chiefly inspired Tim Burton to consider him for the role of Bruce Wayne Batman was because he saw this darkness in Michael Keaton that maybe a lot of people hadn't sort of picked up on yet. But when he played Beetlejuice, that essentially convinced Tim Burton that, yeah, maybe Michael Keaton would be an interesting choice for this. I think he could bring something interesting to it. He'd also done a movie called Clean and Sober, which was a deadly serious drama where he played a recovering alcoholic. So I had already seen Michael Keaton in some things that said to me, like, okay, it's, it's a different choice, but I'm willing to give it a shot because... I think he's a really talented actor. But the fan backlash was really ridiculous on this thing. I remember seeing a, a quote from one of the letters that was sent in. From the Los Angeles Times, July 3rd, 1988. Although this letter was reprinted all over the place as being the example of fan outcry about Michael Keaton's casting. But check out this quote towards the end here. By casting a clown as Batman... Warner Brothers and Burton have defecated on the history of Batman and on the hopes 
of those who appreciate the character and his potential. Better they should have filmed Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns, but that would have required courage, taste, and imagination. Like, wow. I can only imagine what it would have been like if the internet had existed. But what I find really funny now is that there was all this outcry and outrage at the time, yet now people recognize Michael Keaton for the wonderful, talented, multifaceted actor that he is, and most people seem to accept that he was one of the best live-action Batmans we've ever had. And I'll just say right now, he's my personal favorite for all-time greatest live-action Batman. Oh yeah, I have a huge soft spot for Adam West because that's what I grew up with, but that's a different Batman as far as I'm concerned. That's like the Silver Age Batman, and nobody could do that Batman like Adam West. But in terms of playing the dark, serious Batman, Michael Keaton all the way, man. In fact, speaking of The Dark Knight Returns, how long have fans been saying, well, he's older now and he's kind of doing a bit of a comeback. Wouldn't it be great to see a live-action Dark Knight Returns with Michael Keaton as older, grizzled, cranky Batman? Yes, please. Or the other possibility, of course, being a Batman Beyond film with Michael Keaton as the older, grizzled mentor Bruce Wayne training Terry to be the new Batman. So, to put everyone's fears to rest, Warner Brothers released a teaser. Now, at this point, the movie was still in production. They were still finishing it up. But they had to do something because, I mean, this was their big blockbuster movie. Warner Brothers knew they had a hit on their hands. And as soon as people saw it, they would be fine. But they wanted to kind of nip it in the bud a little bit, I think. And so they put out this teaser trailer, which was 90 seconds of footage from the film with just the studio audio. It didn't even have finished audio. There was no music. It was just a collection of clips to show people what the tone was like, what the visuals were like, and give them a little taste to set their fears to rest. So apparently they ran this thing at the beginning of some movies that were out at the time as a trailer, and there was a lot of people actually going just to see the teaser, like buying a ticket to go see the teaser and then leaving before the movie started. That's all they cared about. Now, myself, I didn't see it in a theater. I actually saw it for the first time on Entertainment Tonight. They showed the full 90-second clip, and I could not look away. I was just like, oh my god, this looks amazing. Vicki Vale. Hi. Bruce Wayne. And what do you do for a living? I'd like you to handle this operation personally. Me? Nice outfit. Hold on a second. I can't make it then either. I've got a very important meeting today. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Don't kill me, man! What are you? A Batman. Lieutenant, is there a six-foot bat in Gotham City? Alfred, let's go shopping. Jack is dead, my friend. You can call me Joker. I feel a little drunk. <laughs> and you're not anything. Hey, one drink and I'm flying. <laughs> Wing freak terrorizes. Wait till they get a load of me. <laughs> And as soon as I saw that 90-second trailer, that was it. I was totally sold on it and could not wait to see it. In fact, that was the beginning of my complete and utter obsession with this movie. And throughout the rest of the summer, all the way up to the release date and beyond, I would buy a TV guide and I would scan the TV guide to see if there was any interviews with cast or the director or anything at all about the movie or about Batman in general. I recorded Entertainment Tonight every single day on the off chance they might show some clips or have some interviews or something. All told, I got about two hours of short news segments and previews and interviews and movie reviews and everything that I could get my hands on from 
about a three-month period leading up to the release of the movie, and even a few things after the release of the movie. Now, two hours may not sound like a lot in this day of hours and hours and hours of DVD extras, but you have to understand, these were like one- or two-minute news segments, just little info bites and, and interview snippets and whatnot, accumulated over the course of these three months. So some of the segments were longer than others. I remember I got like a 2020 feature all about Batman. They interviewed Bob Kane. They had clips of him touring the Gotham City set, and it was wonderful. And I, I taped a segment of Good Morning America where they interviewed a whole bunch of cast members of the original 60s series. They actually had, get this, had Adam West, Julie Newmar, Burgess Meredith, and Cesar Romero. Needless to say, of all the things I've ever recorded off TV, that is one of the things I treasure the most. So, of course, being the 50th anniversary and all the hype surrounding the movie, there was a ton of Batman merchandise out there. I bought some things, but I've always been the multimedia guy. So, for me, it was more about getting stuff about the movie and about Batman. Uh, so interviews with creators, things taped off TV, that sort of thing was what was really of interest to me. Information, uh, behind-the-scenes tidbits, uh, critique and analysis, things like that. That's the kind of stuff I really like. Now, that said, I did pick up some things. Like, for example, I got this, which was really cool, which was, uh, this is an audio cassette um, comic book thing, The Untold Legend of the Batman which is basically a three-issue miniseries, which was originally published in 1980. They reprinted it several times over the years, but this particular one was interesting because they actually did a full-cast audio dramatization of it. So, yeah, so this wasn't obviously tied into the movie, but it was tied into the 50th anniversary of Batman. And ugh, also got a whole bunch of other stuff. Just to give you a quick little tidbit here. Got the Prince soundtrack on audio cassette. Got the Danny Elfman score on CD. This was, I actually originally had this on uh, tape, but upgraded to CD. Of course, got the comic book adaptation, which is absolutely beautiful, by the way. This is like a very, very nice adaptation and has some alternate takes of scenes. Got some issues of Starlog, which featured Batman stuff. This is a pretty big one here. Got the Joker there. And then we got some more about Batman there. And, of course, we got the novelization, which is also worth checking out because this has some additional scenes that were actually not filmed. It's adapted from an earlier draft of the script, so it does feature some alternative uh, moments in it. And I don't know if this was off a cereal box or what, but something about Batman motion cards. I think I still have the motion card in question somewhere. I have no idea where it is. And I got a big issue of Premiere Magazine with Kim Basinger. Basinger? I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. Anyway, um, and there was other things, too. I had other magazines and other articles and stuff. I just can't find all of them. They're all buried away or lost to the annals of time. But I was obsessed with this movie and fully jumped in with both feet to Batmania. I'm sorry, but when I start going on about Batman 89, I definitely get enthusiastic and excited because... It was a pretty fun time for me personally because it was the first summer that I was living on my own. So there was a lot of stuff going on in my life at the time. I had my first apartment. I was working on some movie ideas with some friends and writing scripts and composing music. Yeah, I mean, th there was just a lot of stuff going on in my life, a lot of big notable firsts in my life, and Batman came along just to kind of put a big awesome capper on it all. So it was a great summer, a fun summer, a lot of good times with my friends, and uh, and Batman just made it all that much better. Okay, we're going to stop here, because... I get really excited when I talk about this movie, and I realized I kind of went on for quite a while about my obsession with the movie, that we haven't even got to the movie review part. So tell you what, why don't we put this on pause for now, and we'll do the movie review tomorrow, all right? Deal. See you then. So until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream almost every day. And I'll see you next time for the actual review part of the review. Until then, sayonara.
not only did we get the long-awaited dark version of the fucking Batman on the big screen, but fuck, there's so much Batman shit all over the place. Just Batman everywhere. God. It's unbelievable. I didn't come in. So, I had first heard rumblings of there being interest in making a new Batman movie, like a uh, uh, a Batman movie with Batman when I was reading Batman. Because Batman. So, I first started to hear rumblings of there being gastrointestinal difficulties in my bowels. Fans were wanting to see The Dark Knight. The, the Dark Knight detective. The Dark Knight. <laughs> so, the first time I remember hearing sort of rumblings about their being interested in doing a new Batman movie, the one that would encounter... This is going to take some time. Out of all the Batmans we've had, he's... The creme de la creme for me. Creme de la creme? No. So in an intent... So in response to the backlash and to set everyone's fears to rest, Batman released a Batman. And it was Batman. Holy Batman. So Batman it was with the Batman. So to put everyone's... So to put everyone's fears to rest... I'm doing the Alicia Silverstone thing. The lips just out of control. Have you noticed that? Her lips are just like all over the place. I, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's supposed to be cute and sexy. I don't know. It's just weird. And from the moment I saw that 90 second trailer, I was hooked. I was just on crack for Batman. And of course we got the... Whoops. <laughs> we got the... Uh, sorry. Now, what did I think of the movie? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a movie review, isn't it? 